All right, so I, I used to wonder, why, do, why did those people in the older pictures not smile? And then what started this idea of people smiling? Like, because I, you know, I, I've noticed, to me, I, I see a difference with people. I see that people that smile in pictures, to me, they almost don't look like themselves. It's like, it's, how many of you notice that? Like when people, especially when they're smiling real big. If that's just not always them, they don't hardly look like themselves. And the idea of a picture is to capture what a person looked like. And so when I was thinking along those lines, you know, like just not, not even spiritually speaking, just thinking, well, why did the older, why in those older pictures, people didn't smile? But now, you know, everybody, cheese, you know, that's, that's your, that, that's your, cue to smile. Why do, why do people do that? Now, I wasn't trying to get some revelation or anything like that. I, that was just my mind thinking because I know me personally, when it comes time to take pictures, I'm not real big on smiling. That's just, to me, that's just not natural to me. Now, you might be a smiling person and like to smile and that's on you. You know, that's between, that's, that's your prerogative. But I'm talking about me. I like to look like myself. If I know I'm not always walking around cheesing with people, then this is what I look like, you see. So I always wonder, well, why, where, do, where do we get that from? Now, just not, you know, sometimes the Lord will put a thought in your mind for you to think on so that he can come behind it and answer it. And then the Lord spoke to me and told me why, what, what the difference was, why, why when, pic, when pictures first came, you know, when people had the ability to, to snapshot your likeness, why, when it first started, nobody was smiling? And now, you know, everybody smiles. And the Lord told me, because people don't have my real joy. If they had my real joy, they wouldn't have to pretend and smile. Smiling in, for pictures came about. Everybody understand? And because people were really depressed on the inside. And so that was their way of making up for how they were feeling on the inside. Everybody understand? And so that's, that's not God's will. It is God's will for us to, us to have his joy, regardless of what we look like on the outside. Everybody understand? All right. So if you have your Bibles, let's go real briefly to the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew. That's something, how the Lord worked, you, you know, and I, I'll just share with you how this message came about. We were coming here to, to church this morning, my wife and I, and, uh, I, you know, I said, well, Lord, I, you ain't gave me a message yet. I was pretty sure he'd give me one, you know. But I thought, you know, even last night I, I tried to wait on the Lord to, to uh, give me something, didn't get anything. And I said, well, Lord, you didn't, you didn't give me a message yet. And uh, he spoke back and said, open your Bible, whatever it opens to, that's what you're going to preach on. So that's what I did. I opened it up and, and opened it up to the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew. And I started reading at verse 14. And then I saw, oh, okay, so yeah, okay, so this is what you want me to preach on. Seems like I've already preached on this. Then I thought, well, maybe it's something else you want me to see. So you know, I, in some of your Bibles, it have where you find the same story in the ninth chapter of the book of Mark, and then in the ninth chapter of the book of Luke, the same little story here. And so I thought, well, maybe, okay, so if, if the Lord want me to preach on this story again, then, you know, I'll, I'll look at all of the different versions of this same story here, you know, because each one of the authors, they give a different detail that you might miss in some of the other Gospels. And so I started to do that, and the Lord spoke and said, no, I told you where, wherever you turn at. Don't go looking at. So then I knew, okay. So I read, I kept reading, and then the Lord put the picture together for me and if the Lord say the same, we're going to put it together for you, you see. So we're going to start reading at verse 14, 
the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew. It says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. Everybody know what the word lunatic means? The word luna means, well, we get our word lunar, which means moon. Tick means struck, moonstruck. In other words, crazy. <laughs> Today they call it schizophrenic or bipolar. The idea was moonstruck. Of course, you know, the moon isn't always shining on the same part of the earth 24 hours a day. Does everybody understand? Now, I pray that the Lord will help you with this, what we're about to say here. The idea was, it's talking about a moody person. During the day, they're fine, they're happy. At nighttime, or in other words, another part of the day, they're in a bad mood for no reason. That is not something constant. They're not always happy. They're not always sad. They back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so the idea was, which is where the idea of werewolves come from, how like some human being transforming into a wolf, that's where that out. Now, of course, you know we won't get into too much detail about that, but that's where that idea come from. One minute you're a human being, you you can be talked to, you can be reasoned with, you're nice, you know, easy to entreat. And then the next minute, you, you're like a wolf. You, you're a completely different animal. That's what that idea is. It's talking about moody people. So this man, he says, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. Now, you know, I'm afraid today that the devil <laughs> have done a very good job at making us accept lunatics. If you in and out, in and out, you lunatic. You might not be tearing up the house, but it, it, this is what the Bible's talking about. Everybody understand? It don't have to be on both extremes where one minute you're smiling and happy, and then the next minute you're ready to fight somebody. But the idea is the moodiness. You, you, you're happy for one, you know, for a few moments, and then you're sad in the same day, and, and for no particular reason, just in a bad mood. That's lunatic. Now, if you deal with that, you need to be delivered. Everybody understand? Because it's, it's a devil just the same. There's, there's no, God's people don't move in and out of stuff like that. Everybody understand? God's people are steady. Everybody understand? So, the, but the devil has done a good job of making crazy the norm. That's crazy. Everybody understand? It's, it's, it's crazy, these, these mood swings. That's lunatic. That's what the Bible calls lunatic. It, it's nothing there to bother you, you but you bothered. You lunatic. Everybody understand? <laughs> And need to be delivered. You know, we've, we've adopted some words for that now. You know, we've gotten rid of crazy. Now I'm bipolar. And, uh, you know, and then the more acceptable, I'm just moody. I have mood swings. No, you have devil swing. The devil is the one swinging you. There's no reason. Everybody understand? How else can you explain that? You're exactly what this Bible says. You're a lunatic. You're crazy. Now, I just call it what it is, crazy. Nothing bad happened to you, but you're in a bad mood. That's, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Everybody understand? And you need to be delivered. That's, it's a spirit. Everybody understand? All right, so we need to make that clear. So verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore what? Vexed. Now, that, those are twin brothers. What is he saying when he said so vexed? Tormented. 
when people go through those mood swings, we'll call it what you call it, <laughs> so that you don't, you don't get removed from it. When you go through those mood swings, you're also tormented because it's not normal and it's not written in your DNA to be able to go from one extreme to the other like that. Especially when you don't know the cause of it. I refuse to accept crazy as normal. Everybody understand? Well, we would all be in bad shape if the Lord was this way. Having bad moods. Now, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you right now. Don't know why. I just don't want to talk. Yeah, you crazy. Everybody, yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> the Lord don't change. I, I have never, ever, ever went to the Lord to talk to him and he told me to shut up. I don't feel like talking. Don't feel like hearing you talk. <laughs> that's a devil. Everybody, that's a real devil. It's a lunatic devil. Everybody understand? It's designed, if you get old, it's designed to make you grow old by yourself. So you can be, everybody know those crazy old people? Everybody scared to talk to? Yeah, that's how they get that way. So that they can get pulled off in the office. Nobody ever come see me. Yeah, because we don't know which one's going to be there when we get there. <laughs> so look, it says, he's so vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. Everybody see that? Think about this spiritually. Fire and water, two opposites. He's talking about the extreme. The extreme of people. Let's look at fire as being in a bad mood. We know fire is designed to kill you. But don't you forget about that water. Even though water puts out fire, extinguishes fire, water will also drown you. So let's look at the, the lunatic in those extremes. One moment I'm sad and mad and ready to fight the war world. So I know I don't need that. So to swing myself back to the other end, I'm going to go out of my way to produce water. In other words, happiness and joy. But you don't know that's meant to drown you because that's not the Lord's joy. Because if it was, you would be in the middle all the time. So these are the people that need something good to do. Have to do something to make themselves happy. That'll kill you just like the fire will. Everybody understand? If the devil can't burn you, he'll drown you. You might have enough sense to not want to deal with the fire because that's, of course, you know it's hot and that's not good for anything but cooking and killing. But what about this water? See, you could be deceived into thinking, well, yeah, thank the Lord I got a pool with some water and I'm going to go swimming. I'm going to swim in happiness. The only problem is if that happiness is not of the Lord, the devil's going to drown you in it. Why? Because you can't afford to keep this going. So what happens when you have to step out of this, this fantasy world that you've built for yourself? You swing right back into the fire. Everybody understand? That's where the torment is. Everybody understand? All right, let's go ahead and keep reading. It says, And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus did what? Rebuked who? Everybody see that? Notice how he dealt with it? He rebuked who? His prescription was not, okay, so now you're in the fire. Let me write a prescription of happiness for you. You'll be happy if you get married. You'll be happy if you have a nice house. 
You'll be happy if you get a good car. Just have faith for those things, and that happiness will keep you out of the fire. Is that what he said? No, let's deal with it at the root. You have a devil. I'm not going to tell you to just always go swim, get in the water, because he'll drown you in it. I'm telling you to stay out of both of them. Everybody understand? Verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was what? Cured. Everybody see? There is a cure for that abnormality. There is a cure for these mood swings. When somebody is cured, they're not dealing with it anymore. There's a cure for that. That's, that ain't supposed to be life. Everybody understand? Now, the mood swings, they're not supposed to be, that's not life. That's death. He was cured from that very hour, verse 19. Then came the disciples, the, the disciples to Jesus apart, in other words, privately, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your what? Unbelief. You pay close attention to that. Had they, are, had they cast out devils before? Yes, they had. Yes, they had. Had they done miracles before? Yes. Yes, they had. But Jesus told them, because of your unbelief, Everybody understand? Let's go, we'll get back to that. Let's go and keep reading. He says, if, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and what? Fasting. Uh, let's pay close attention. Now let's go down to verse 24. It says, And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him. In other words, spoke first to him. Let's keep reading. And saying, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children free. Now, you know what the Lord is doing? He's given us this mindset. What mindset? In the kingdom of God, it's certain things we're free from. Everybody understand? There's certain things we're free from. And we can, we can walk in that liberty. But the Bible tells us not to use our liberty as a cloak of sin. There are some things I can do. Everybody understand? I have liberty to do it. But I won't do it. Everybody understand? I could drink wine if I want to. In fact, this Bible tells us, drink wine for, for your stomach's sake. In other words, it's, it's apparently something in it that helps you with your stomach issues. But I won't do it. I'm not going to use that liberty as a cloak. Everybody understand? So that's, that's what he's telling us, that the children are free. God's children are free. Everybody understand? And I just use that as an example. <laughs> I'm going to use this as an example as well. 
I remember years ago, when I, I worked at a TV station, and uh, it would get pretty hot in the room that we were in. We, uh, that room was like Command Central. That's why all the buttons were pressed and all of that. So, you know, all, all that equipment in there, it would get hot and it was closed in. So one day I wore some shorts to work. These shorts were past my knees. Not thinking anything of it, didn't think a thing about it. But I remember people looking at me, knowing that I was a preacher. And I knew what those looks were. He's, he's a preacher and he's wearing shorts. Not even above my knees. But that day I vowed I'll never do that again. Not for my sake, I can go to heaven wearing shorts. But for your sake, if looking at my hairy calves is going to cause you to go to hell, <laughs> I wear a long sleeve everything. Everybody understand? <laughs> That's the way we have to, we have to be if, if, when we walk in the love of God. Everybody understand? Yeah, that's the way we have to be. So verse 27, it says, Notwithstanding, lest we should all what? Offend them. For no particular reason. Not offending them and keeping the word, but offending them in something that we can help. Everybody see? Lest, in other words, to keep from offending them, go thou to the sea and cast and hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, Everybody see why it's important except 3 o'clock? Detail instructions. Look at what he says. And cast a hook. Everybody see that? Not a net. Like they were used to fishing. Cast a hook. Everybody see? And take up the fish that first cometh up. You know, you know what fishermen normally do? Usually the first fish that they catch, they're using that as bait to catch a bigger fish. No, 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 Peter. That's not what you're going to do. Take the first one that, you, that comes up. And then do what? When thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Everybody see that? So in these two stories, we see faith in the middle. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. And we see in the first story, there was faith for healing and deliverance. In the second story we read, there was faith for provision. And that's usually where people want to keep it. Lord, I got faith for healing. Lord, I got faith for, for deliverance. Lord, I have faith for provision. But you don't see it. You don't see what you're looking for. You believe you have faith because you're saying it, but you don't. Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. And yet he sent Peter to go fishing, and Peter did exactly what he said to do. Went, had the faith to go fishing. Had the faith to catch it, open its mouth, take that money out and go pay taxes. But Jesus told him, you're faithless. You want to know why the Lord said they were faithless? Let's bring some balance into this. Let's go to verse 22 now. It says, And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding what? Why? Because now, in today's age, just like it was back then, everybody got faith to be healed, delivered. Everybody got faith to be provided for. 
but nobody has the faith to suffer. And when you don't have faith to suffer, you don't have faith to be victorious. And the Lord knows it. Everybody understand? You ever wonder why the Lord always something good can happen? I just cast out a devil and we all praising God. And then here you come with this death talk. You always bringing that up, killing the mood. <laughs> I want to be happy. I want to smile on every picture. But you know what? If you don't have the faith to suffer, you know why? Because faith is the same. The same faith that cast out devils, the same faith that can receive provision, that's the faith that it takes to suffer without complaining. Everybody understand? And so if you don't have faith to suffer, the devil knows it. If you're one of those people, you don't want to go through anything. Every time you go through a little something, you griping and moaning and complaining about it. The devil knows it. And he also knows that's what's keeping your healing from manifesting. That's what's keeping provision from being made for you. You don't have faith. What you really have is hope. And the devil's got that. Everybody see now the difference there. Hope hopes for something good. Faith deals with it all. Everybody understand? People by nature don't want to hear no. How many of you just love hearing no? You rejoice when you hear no. You rejoice when you turn down for something. Notice in the beginning of time, God set before Adam both sides. We went over that, I think, last week. God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. What was he really saying? Go be intimate with one another and make babies. Isn't that what he was saying? But God didn't stop there. Oh, yeah, and, and all these trees y'all can eat of, but this one, don't you eat of that one. Now, why didn't they pick and choose? Why didn't they rebel against the being fruitful and multiply? We know they did that. No, we're not going to fight you, God, over having sex. No, that's no. That's, that's a good thing. But you told us not to do something. Now we got a problem. Everybody understand? So what was it? <laughs> People by nature want to swing into the water side. They know there's something wrong with the fire. So let me swing over here by nature. But don't want to deal with hard times. And the reason why they don't want to deal with it is because they really don't believe that God uses that suffering that you're going to go through to strengthen you for other stuff. Everybody understand? But they walk around and really convinced in their minds, I have faith. I can walk on water. I can, you know, I can be delivered. I can pray for somebody and the Lord will deliver them. I got faith for, for provision. And God has said, no, you don't. No, you don't either. Listen, why? Because if you had faith to be fed, you'd have faith when you were hungry. If you had faith to have money in your bank account, for me, in other words, if you had faith for my provision, you'd have faith when you're empty-handed. That is the reason why the children of Israel spent 40 days in the wilderness, and, and 40, they spent 40 years in the wilderness and not 40 days. God right then was proving that, that pendulum that swings back and forth with people on one side or the other, and not in the middle. You notice that this, what, what did we have to do when we went to verse 22? We had to go back, didn't we? That wasn't that, what we just read, that's in the middle of both of those, isn't it? That's God showing you the balance in his word. Everybody understand? Faith is balanced. 
we, we deliver somebody here, but, and then on the other side, we, we do provision, but in the middle of it is some suffering. Now, if you can't deal with the suffering, you, ain't gonna, you can't deal with any of it. You know why? Because the Bible says Jesus Christ learned obedience through the things he suffered. So that's the reason why he could cast out devils. That's the reason why he, he could just speak things into existence. You know why? Because he had the willingness on the inside to suffer. He understood, listen, that's, that's your clue whether or not you have faith or just hope. Faith deals with it all. Faith, faith is not lunatic. It's not happy when things are going good and then sad when things are going bad. Faith keeps you right there in the middle. You don't know what a person is going through when they have faith unless they tell you. Everybody understand? Because faith keeps you balanced. Everybody understand? And that's the name of this message today, Faith for All Seasons. Everybody understand? And we, if you read through those Gospels, when the Lord Jesus Christ was walking this earth, there were several times. He just out of the blue would say, the Son of Man must go, you know, and be crucified. They're going to kill him. But they didn't believe it. You know why they didn't believe it? Because they only wanted to see the good stuff. We, don't, we just want to heal people. We just want provision. They didn't accept the suffering. And that's the reason why the Lord had to tell, them, tell him, Peter, when you are converted. In other words, when your mind changes about this suffering. What made Peter pull out his sword and cut off the high priest's servant's ear? Because he didn't want to suffer. He didn't want to suffer. If he was really that much for the cause, he would have went to the cross right along with Jesus Christ. So what is that telling us? Peter pulled out his sword to fight suffering. That's what we do. We'll fight God behind suffering. Don't you? Don't. No, I don't want I don't. You, you're just a party pooper. You always got to ruin the mood. This is where people live when they're lunatic. That, everybody understand? We're trying to make it clear now. You, you don't want a happy, happy, joy, joy. You don't want real life. Real life is people go through things. Everybody understand? I'm telling you, there's no such thing as going through this life without going through something. A whole lot. You're going to go through a whole lot. Now, I feel like this. I'd rather take, my, take it now. You're going you're gonna to take it anyway. That, that, I, I, I tell you, I feel bad for people in hell. To go through it here and then have to live there. If you're going to go through it, you might as well get something out of it. Okay, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this situation? No, I'm not going to complain. I'm not, no, I'm not going to do that. This is a part of life. Everybody understand? It, everybody understand? You don't get by. Suffering is a part of life. Now, you can use it for God's benefit and for your growth. Or you can keep fighting against it and then wonder why you're not getting what you're praying for. <laughs> so you see the transformation there. The Lord had to tell Peter, uh, Peter, when you're converted, strengthen your brother. Why? Because he wasn't converted. He, he, was, he, he had fight in him. He was fighting. He, he didn't want to suffer. But you know what? The day came when him and one of his counterparts, they were preaching. They were brought before the high priest and they were whipped, given uh, 39 lashes. And you know what they did? They walked out of there rejoicing and went and preached some more. Now they had faith, real faith. Everybody understand? They could rejoice 
in their suffering. They rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer. Everybody see that? So, let, so if we, doesn't the Bible say that? They rejoiced because they were counted worthy to suffer? Do you, in other words, suffering is an honor. <laughs> if your mind change about suffering, then you'd see the glory of God all the time. Everybody understand? If your mind change about what you have to go through in life, okay, let's back up. Verse 21. How be it, this kind goeth not out by, but by what? Prayer and what? So let me ask this question. In Jesus Christ's day, when he was walking this earth, was he fasting? Was fasting a part of his life? Yes, it was. Let me ask this question. Was his disciples fasting? No. You know why? Because they just wanted the happy part. They saw the Lord fasting. But they didn't. Everybody understand? So you know what the Lord's... Why? Because fasting, with fasting, you're going to suffer. Now that's one of the highest forms of suffering you're going to go through, you know, without some outside influence. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You wait until you get dizzy and everything is pitch black. Where's everybody? What? What? <laughs> I hear you, Lord. I... <laughs> when we fast, we're telling God, I'm willing to suffer for your glory. But if we have a problem with pushing that plate away, we sure enough don't want to be whipped. Everybody understand? But you know, flesh don't like to be denied. We see it in the Garden of Eden. They were going to get pleasure out of being fruitful and multiply. But there was no pleasure in don't eat of this tree lest you die. Flesh don't want to hear no. Flesh want to grasp a hold of everything it can. It want everything that's good but don't want to take what, I'm not going to even say the bad because it's not bad. But in flesh's mind, flesh perceives suffering as bad. Everybody understand? And I, 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 let me prove this. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, what were they saying? If, you're the, if you really are the son of God, come down off that cross. You saved, you, you saved other people, save yourself. Why? Because what were they speaking from? From a standpoint of flesh. They didn't know that he, was really, he really was the king up there. That's what made him the king. Everybody understand? The Lord never wore a crown until he put one on his head for that cross. Everybody understand? Even when they took him to try to make him king, he refused. They made him king that day. Crown him suffering is what crowned God. Everybody understand? I pray we get it. And so Jesus, he was constantly reminding his disciples, the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. They shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. He was constantly reminding, him, reminding them that he was going to be killed. Why? Because in between all of the miracles, he wanted them to understand this is really what's bringing the miracles to pass. I'm willing to suffer. And when I'm telling you, even after all the rejoicing, 
of people being healed, people being raised from the dead, people being fed and provision made for them, even after when all the rejoicing is done, let's come back to ground zero. Let's get back to the middle here. Suffering is a part of being victorious. Everybody understand? It is a part of being victorious. So what he was doing was trying to prepare them for their real life in him. I'm going to tell you why, why that's important. You take somebody that's on that pendulum swinging, fire, water, fire, water, just up and down, up and down, up and down. They can only get started in God and go so far. You know why? Because when they take two steps into God, the devil's there with something to trouble them, and then they're going to back up. Didn't our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was in his earth, he preached about the sores and the saw? Didn't he tell us that there are some people, when they receive the word, they receive it gladly. But what happens? The devil show up, and when persecution comes, they lose what they had. They, the word gets uprooted. They get offended. So what is he doing? He's teaching us this is how you continue to grow. If every time you go through something, you turn around and run back the other way, how are you going to grow in God? Everybody understand? All right, if we, have, if we understand that, let's go to the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians now. I tell you, people quote this scripture, quote it, quote it, quote it, quote it, and have no idea what it's saying. After the day, they will. Fourth chapter of the book of Philippians, we're going to start reading at verse 10. No, let's start at verse 13. Let's start with what they quote. I can do all things through Christ, which what? Strengthen me. That's probably one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible. I can do all things. I can do anything. I can do it all. And they think what he's saying, what he's saying is, I can do all things as long as God is on my side. As long as I got God in, a, in, in my car, I can do it all. That's a, that's a nice concept if that's all you're reading. If, if that's all you're quoting and, and you, you, you're not reading what's around it. So let's go and let's look at what God was really saying. Let's start at verse 10. It says, but I rejoiced in who? How? Now you know that scripture means the joy of the Lord is our what? That's not, that's not talking about God over here happy. That's talking about you finding your joy in the Lord. You rejoice because God is in your life, not because of what you're going through. Everybody understand? That kind of joy, the joy that comes from the Lord is my strength. That's what that's saying. Everybody understand? All right, let's go and keep reading. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, in other words, mindful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, in other words, of lack. He's saying, I'm, I'm really glad to have received from you the items that I needed in this natural life. Food, clothes, whatever it was. I'm really glad that, that you came through. And he said, I understand that you been wanting to do this for me, but you lacked opportunity. But now that I've received the stuff that you had for me, I'm really glad that you did it. And then he says, not, and he said, I don't, respect, I don't speak in respect of lack. In other words, I'm not saying this because I was about to commit suicide. 
I'm not saying this because I was about to lose my mind and give up hope altogether. Look what he says. For I have what? Learned. Everybody see that? You see what he said? I have what? Learned. In other words, this was a lesson. This is from me going through it. I've learned it. Not from somebody else's testimony about it. It was me. I went through it. Now, when you learn something, you know there's a difference between knowing something and learning something? Most people, when they study for a test, they study to know it so that they can pass it. When you learn something, 20 years later, you're going to be able to, to testify of it. It's going to stick with you. It's going to become a part of you. And that's what Paul is saying. This is something that is a part of me. I've learned this. Learn what? In whatsoever state I am. In other words, regardless of what season I'm going through, therewith to be what? Content. In other words, before y'all sent me that food, I was hungry. My stomach was growling. Before y'all sent me those clothes, I was shivering cold. But I was still rejoicing. That's something I learned. Everybody understand? In other words, whatever I found, whatever situation I found myself in, I did not get bitter at God. I understood that he was still God. I was not going to be a lunatic. I wasn't going to be swung back and forth on that pendulum depending on what mood the devil was in that day. No, I, I wasn't on that roller coaster. That's the reason why I could get whipped 40 save one on five different occasions and still testify of the goodness of God. Everybody understand? That's the reason why my eyesight can be not so good, but I can still write you and not blame it, blame it on God. That's the reason why. That's the reason why I'm going to be known as one of the hardest working apostles there is. Because I have learned what? In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Everybody understand? You know what it was? Okay, Lord, today we're eating bread. Today we're eating peanut butter. Okay, if that's what you call for, then today we'll eat it. Okay, Lord, tomorrow is, is jelly. Okay, well, that's, that's good too. One day I'll, have, I'll be able to have them both on the same day. But I'm not worried about it. Not, not that the devil's going to have to come with something bigger than that. Everybody understand? Today I'm eating ham, tomorrow I'm eating burger. I, and I'm not going to gripe. Everybody understand? It's, it's all the same to me. It's all the same. You know why? Because if I'm griping about ham one day, and then I'm griping about the burger the next, I'll never have hamburger. God will never bring those two together for me as long as I'm griping. Because it's proven I don't have faith. Everybody understand? All right, let's read verse 12. Look at what he says. So in verse 11, he says, I've learned. Isn't that right? Look at what he says in verse 12. I know what? Both. Everybody see that? I know both. Both what? How to be abased and know how to abound. Everywhere. Everybody see that? Everywhere. In other words, I ain't got no, it ain't, I, I have no respect of place. In, 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 in front of my church folks, I, I'm not, you know, I, I know y'all don't mind being poor, don't mind suffering, so I'm not trying to put on this facade like I'm down with the cause. But then when I'm around a, another group, I'm trying to high step and be high-minded about it. He says everywhere, 
regardless of where I am. I'm the same. I know, I know how to look poor in front of rich people. And I know how to look rich in front of poor people. I'm not hobnobbing with folks, you know, based on where I am at the moment. I'll be wherever God tell me to be, and I'll be just as poor, just as rich as he want me to be, wherever. Everybody understand? Verse 12, I know how, both how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am what? Instructed. That's why I learned, because I'm instructed. What? Both. Everybody see that? God is more concerned about your holiness than he is your happiness. And so we are instructed the same way, both. Everybody understand? I am instructed both to be full and to be what? Hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now we know what that means in verse 13. I can do all things. In other words, what is he saying? I can deal with any situation that come my way through Christ. I, 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 there have been times I've had lack. I know God is a provider. But I'm not going to gripe when I have lack. Everybody understand? How many of you fussed at God when he blessed you? How many of you fussed at him? You just complaining when he came through with money for you. How many of you complain when it looked like it wasn't coming through? Everybody understand? You see that pendulum there? Lunatic? You see the craziness? If, if you're going to complain, complain about it all. Lord, you had no business doing this for me. You ain't had no business waking me up. <laughs> Everybody understand? The devil keeps people on that pendulum when there's no real faith there. When there's no real faith. Everybody understand? He keeps you on that pendulum. That's, real faith is in the middle there. I, I've learned both. I've inst I was instructed both. Everybody understand? This way or this way? Fire or water? It don't matter to me because I'm in the middle. I know when the fire gets too hot, God will put it out with water. I know when the water is, when the devil's trying to drown me in water, he'll, he'll burn it with fire. So I, I'll be in the middle with God. Everybody understand? I'm not going to take upon myself to go live in water or go try to walk on fire. I'll be right here in the middle. God knows when the devil's trying to, trying to drown me or when he's trying to burn me. He knows that. So he'll use fire and water, depending on my situation. Until then, I'll stay right here in him. Everybody understand? That's God's will. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word going forth. Thank you, Lord, for using your word to instruct us in righteousness. And God, we ask that you will help us to take this word to heart, Lord. Help us not to fall into any traps, Lord, that the enemy may have set. Help us, Lord. We ask you by your Holy Spirit to remind us of this word, Lord. Anytime we fall ourselves, call, find ourselves into getting pulled into whatever mood swings the devil's trying to pull us into. Help us, Lord, to learn the lessons that you want us to learn, Lord, in being a base and to abound. Help us know, Lord, that you're God, whether or not we're basing or abounding. Help us to find our strength, Lord, in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. That's all now. Uh, pray that we'll meet up a little later to discuss what the Lord had to say to us. And um, we'll dismiss you in the name of the Lord Jesus.